Welcome to part 6 of 20 specialized quizzer designed to enhance your understanding of section 56 to 65 of the Revised Corporation Code of the Philippines, Republic Act No. 11232. This tool is aimed at law students, accountancy students, and financial management students who need to grasp the intricacies of corporate law in the Philippines effectively. The quizzer includes a series of higher-order thinking skills, HOTS, questions that challenge you to think critically about the legal provisions and apply them in various scenarios. This method not only aids in recall, but also in developing a deeper understanding of how these laws operate within the Philippine corporate landscape. One. Can Treasury shares vote in corporate decisions while they remain in the Treasury? No. Treasury shares have no voting rights as long as they remain in the Treasury, Section 56.2. What options do stockholders have for voting in corporate meetings other than attending in person? Stockholders may vote through proxy, remote communication, or in absentia if so authorized in the bylaws or by a majority of the Board of Directors, Section 57. 3. Are there limitations on the validity period of a proxy given by a stockholder for voting at meetings? Yes, unless otherwise specified, a proxy is valid only for the meeting for which it is intended and cannot be effective for more than five years at any one time, Section 57. 4. Under what conditions can a voting trust extend beyond five years? A voting trust can extend beyond five years if it is specifically required as a condition in a loan agreement and will expire upon full payment of the loan, Section 58. 5. What documentation is required for a voting trust to be effective and enforceable? A voting trust agreement must be in writing, notarized, and a certified copy must be filed with both the corporation and the commission, Section 58. 6. Can voting trust certificates be transferred? If yes, how? Yes, voting trust certificates are transferable in the same manner and with the same effect as certificates of stock, Section 58. Seven. What is considered a valid consideration for the issuance of stock? Considerations can include cash, tangible or intangible property, labor or services rendered, previously incurred debts, amounts from retained earnings, or other accepted forms, Section 61. Eight. What restrictions apply to the issuance of shares against unpaid claims by the corporation? Shares of stock against which the corporation holds any unpaid claims shall not be transferable in the books of the corporation, Section 62. 9. When must a certificate of stock be issued to a subscriber? A certificate of stock must be issued once the full amount of the subscription along with any interest and expenses due has been paid, Section 63. 10. What liabilities do directors face for the issuance of watered stocks? Directors are solidarily liable with the stockholder concerned for issuing stocks below par or issued value or for stocks issued for insufficient non-cash considerations, if they consent to such issuances or fail to object knowing the consideration is insufficient, Section 64. 
11. How long is a subscription of shares in a corporation to be formed irrevocable? A subscription of shares in a corporation yet to be formed is irrevocable for at least six months from the date of subscription, section 60. 12. How can stockholders ensure their votes count when they cannot attend meetings? Stockholders can ensure their votes count by voting through proxies, remote communication, or in absentia, with appropriate procedures established by the corporation, Section 57. 13. What are the legal responsibilities of trustees in a voting trust agreement? Trustees must execute and deliver voting trust certificates to the transfers and ensure the agreement's terms are adhered to, with the agreement open for inspection as stipulated, Section 58. 14. Are there any legal grounds on which a voting trust agreement can be declared void? Yes, a voting trust agreement can be void if it is entered into for circumventing laws against anti-competitive practices or for perpetuating fraud, Section 58. 15. What are the consequences if the conditions of consideration for issuing stocks are not met? The directors and officers may face legal liabilities for the difference in value if stocks are issued for less than their par or issued value or for non-cash considerations that are overvalued, Section 64.